everyone, it's Heather Darnall and welcome back to my art channel. So the last tutorial I did was just of a little simple watercolor pencil hummingbird and at the end of the tutorial I was so happy and I'm not talking about because the, the hummingbird itself came out cute. I'm talking about the paper that I put the, the hummingbird on. Um, I was so pleased that it did not turn out wrinkly or come out warped or anything because going into it, actually, I was really, really worried that was gonna be what was gonna happen and it would just cheapen, you know, my work and make it look really, you know, ugh, a hot mess to say the least. So anyways, because it turned out really well, it prompted me to do this video and add to my little mini 101 series that I have and just collect as much information as I have to give to you guys so that when you are watercolor paper shopping yourself, you'll have a lot better idea where to go and feel comfortable about as far as making um, the better decision for you. Now, I only have four pads of watercolor paper, so I, unfortunately I don't have more to, you know, make a review on or do a review on or even a comparison. This is just all I have, like I said, but hopefully again, at the end of the, t at the, end of the day, I hope it's enough to really do you good and just provide you with the information um, and visual that you need. So before we get started, today's ministry snack comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 12, and it reads, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. My goodness, guys, prayer, to me, to me, I think prayer in general, it sounds easy to do. And um, it's very easy for us to say that we're going to pray for someone. You know, especially when you know you see on social media people are like oh I need prayers for this or this or this or you're just talking to a friend and they're like I don't I really need prayers and the first thing we have is our intentions come out good intentions to say I'm praying now for you you got it you got it no problem I'll pray and a lot of the times because what we're dealing with in the moment is something distracting and therefore prevents us from actually doing that uh, favor or um, task to pray wholeheartedly to God and God knows that we're distracted. We have a whole lot of things going on in our life. He didn't design us to be at prayer 24 seven. He designed us to do many different things and have different responsibilities, but prayer should be one of them. And also thankfully there's no, you know, there's no specific time. There's no minimum of time that you need to spend in prayer. It's really whatever's on your heart at the time. And it could be multiple times a day. It could be for 30 seconds at a time. It could be 10 minutes, 30 minutes at a time. Really it's just what's on your heart and needs to be at a full connection with God. Um, you can't have anything else on your mind, not Facebook, not the dishes, not taking your kids to their sports or you know the traffic you're gonna be sitting in because all that stuff seeps in and just really discounts your prayer. Therefore wasting your time and then we get frustrated. Why, aren't, why, why prayers aren't answered? You know, I was praying this all the time. Really think about your focus at the time. And that happens to me too, you guys. I am not perfect in prayer. I struggle and I struggle often and it really becomes a frustration at times. But thankfully the Holy Spirit is like, well, wait a minute, that is not, that is not God's not hearing you. You're not connecting to him for him to hear you. And so that hard truth is good. I appreciate that because it really makes me sit and think about what did I do? What did I do wrong? You know, um, and so the only really right way to pray is just from the heart. There's nothing special that has to come out. There's no religious jargon that needs to be said. There's nothing scripted. It is what is on your heart at the time. And when you are basically spilling your heart out, you know, that's when God knows it's real. And then he wants to lean in and hear what you have to say to then answer your prayer. Um, so much of it in his will. But anyways, don't beat yourself up um, about prayer. Just because it's hard, don't think about not doing it. The only reason why some people have a better prayer life than others is because they dedicate themselves. They discipline themselves to make that quality time with God. And that's why they're always walking around super happy for the most part. You know, everybody struggles. Even they too have, you know, have hard times. Um, but for the most part, you can really see when somebody has the time, makes time and discipline to spend with God and really just have that connection. Because when you have that connection, you guys, I'd be walking around all day with smiles on my face too. And I know what that feeling is like because I have been on that connection. I have been on that, you know, tra that tractor beam and 
sheer focus with the Lord. And it is amazing. I mean, doors open, lights turn on, you know, things just really kind of the perspective of things change and the overall feeling in life is different, you know? And so when you know where that sweet spot is and when you know you've had that feeling before, you'll know when your prayer is technically wrong and it's only because your heart was in the wrong place. So, all right guys, I hope that was able to make that a little bit more informative for you too there as well. But for now, let's go to the table and talk watercolor papers. All right. So I know I'm not the only one who stares at all the watercolor paper choices in Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever. And because they can get confusing, I, at least for me at least, I find myself just looking at the cost and then hoping for the best. Well, like the saying, not all calories are created equal, neither is watercolor paper because you get what you pay for just like you are what you eat. Anyway, so hopefully I'm able to answer some questions. And if I didn't answer any that you are hoping to have an answer for, please feel free to ask me in the comment section. I'll be happy to find out for you and give you the source where I found it. Um, if anything, that would help me too to gain a little more knowledge myself. Uh, I mean, after all, no one stops learning in anything we do. So I have four kinds of watercolor paper here, um, ranging from you know cheap and cost all the way to the most expensive. But before I explain why each one has the difference in cost, I thought I'd explain what all the listed information means. That way it'll speak for itself why each one is so different and either worth it or not worth it. So the first kind I have here, I bought at Michael's for like 18 or 19 bucks. Um, it has more paper than all my pads or books being at 60 sheets, um, which comes to like 30 cents or so per sheet. And this is the largest size out of my stack of watercolor pads, which is um, 11 by 14. Take note that the average size of watercolor paper is 9 by 12. And maybe you can see 9 by 12, 9 by 12, and 9 by 12. Um, anyways, this first kind isn't even technically watercolor paper. It's mixed media paper that is good for a variety of art mediums that include watercolor, but also for pen, pencil, and acrylic acrylic painting, believe it or not. Um, now, if you ask me, that's a drastic difference in art mediums. I mean, think about the difference alone in acrylic paints versus just using pencil. That's night and day. So although it says it's acceptable for, you know, the more heavy duty type of paint or whatever medium you're using, my guess is it's okay if you're using a, like a really small amount, like painting a smiley face or something because the weight of the paint or you know, the amount of paint you use, especially if it's a lot, can soak through the paper and or, you know, make it collapse in the worst way. So again, if you're not going to town on it and not covering every little square inch, you may be okay, but I still don't recommend it for acrylic painting, not even for some watercolor. That is why I think canvases are your best bet for the using um, of more denser art mediums or watercolors used with a lot of water. And if you care where this one's from, this paper or brand is made in France. So I'm just gonna stack this off here to the side. Next, I have um, some Artist Loft watercolor paper, also made in France, um, that I bought for six bucks at Michael's. I was actually looking for something cheap when I bought this. I wasn't even looking at all the information. I just wanted something that I could test some paints on. Um, I was doing a comparison on seeing the difference between some Golden Artist Colors heavy body black paint versus some Apple Barrel black craft paint. I needed something thicker than office paper, which in this case, this paper was perfect. And I didn't have my 11 by 14 pad at the time, or I just would have used that, um, which is a good choice for testing paint, especially if you're just, you know, painting a few strips to see how far the paint will extend and to get a better idea of the paint's pigmentation. Anyway, this one has 25 sheets onto the pad, so that's about 25 cents per sheet. Um, now here I have some Arteza, Ar Arteza. Oh, gosh, my, I've had these products for a long time now and I still don't know if it's pronounced Arteza or Arteza, so whatever. Maybe I'll just go with the flow of everyone else saying Arteza. So anyway, I have some Arteza watercolor paper here. Paper here. Um, and this one is made in the USA, although it also says at the top that it's not only ideal for watercolor, but for watercolor techniques um, and, mix, and mixed media. Now here, I wish I would have paid more attention to the word 
techniques, which means to me, if you're just practicing various brush strokes, etc. Um, and on the product and it's in particular, I mean, on the product and its interpretation, because it, it could be misleading. I mean, at least it was for me. Um, so this pad has 14 sheets and I bought it on Amazon for 20 bucks, which comes out to about 70 cents per sheet. Now, as far as Amazon goes, it's a love hate for me. And I love the fact that I can get most anything with free shipping in two days, as far as having a prime membership and just the fact that I can buy almost anything anyways. But I hate how sometimes the products are stupid expensive, as in literally twice as much or more as the same products found in box stores like Michaels or Hobby Lobby, or even some, you know, stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace. And I mentioned those because believe it or not, there are a lot of art supplies used that are found there like Flow Troll for those who enjoy, you know, fluid art, paint pouring, um, various spackle knives, drop cloths, painter stands, you know, stuff like that. But as far as I, Arteza products, I really haven't found anywhere except Amazon. So I think I'm pretty much stuck buying from there. Unless anyone knows of any other place, please let me know in the comment section. Um, but I do have to say Amazon sometimes has some smoking deals on some products, which I have been blessed to find on occasion as in half the cost as it does um, or would be in like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something. So my advice is do some research when it comes to the products because any hobby usually is never a cheap one to begin with. Hence why we find, you know, deals and coupons to make it affordable to continue doing. Okay, so now for the last watercolor pad, I have Arches. This one is also made in France. And um, this pad has a measly 10 sheets, but get this. <laughs> My gosh, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but I bought this pad on Amazon just a few days into the new year, this year, 2021, for 58 bucks plus tax, which came to 62 bucks, which comes to $6.20 per sheet. And then you won't believe this. I just checked on Amazon today, um, July 28th of 2021, and the price went up to $68.70. So, Let's add some tax on that. That's going to be probably about 70 bucks, which now makes it about $7 per sheet. That is crazy. Um, now I'll be honest. I didn't check Hobby Lobby. Um, when I first saw this paper back in January, I just bought it and I knew it was expensive, but I did notice that this particular watercolor paper has unusually higher numbers listed, which my guess was the reason for the insane increase in price. Uh, I had the money and I was looking for super high quality watercolor paper anyways and thought to myself, eh, you know, if this turns out just as similar as these other three, then I'll never forgive myself for spending that kind of money. But if it does in fact turn out, you know, super awesome, not only will I be happy, but I'll be sure to, you know, really be conservative what I paint on it because that's each sheet is about as expensive as a canvas. Um, and depending on the type of canvas, it could be much more especially without a sale or some sort of coupon. Uh, and I know Hobby Lobby has bi-monthly 50% off sales from their Master Such products, which includes canvases and even cradled wood panels. And that's usually when and where I suck up on my supplies um, and canvases and such. Um, occasionally, Michaels has some 70% off of their level three gallery wrapped canvases. And in that case, you just go. <laughs> I mean, it's stupidity if you don't go. So, I mean, I feel like like in a good way, that's like a legal robbery because at that point they're just practically letting you rob them with such amazing prices. But anyways, okay. So now I've told you what I have and now let's talk about all the jazz you see on the watercolor pads that will hopefully give you more insight on the actual product you're looking to buy. Now, what sets one watercolor paper apart from another is it's material makeup for starters, which means what the paper is made of. You'll see that many say um, it's made with 100% cotton. Sorry, I'm just trying to like organize these here to how I wanna put them flat out again so you can kind of see everything. Um, so like I said, it depends on the material makeup for starters, which means you know what the paper is made of. Um, again, like I said, you'll see that a lot of them say made with 100% cotton like you can see here, 100% um, cotton and 
100% cotton. Um, so, but you'll also see some that don't say anything. And that's usually like this artist loft here and this mixed media paper here. So those are just considered standard. And when you see that, or if it doesn't specify, it's just an automatic indicator that those are standard, great for beginners, or just simple things, um, you know, for like testing paints like I did. So the standard watercolor paper is primarily made of chemically treated wood shavings or wood pulp mixed in with a little bit of uh, cotton, which makes them, you know, the papers or sheets rather super flimsy, whereas being made with 100% cotton, it makes them thicker. And, you know, hello, let's face it, if you're using water on your paper, you need thicker paper for it to be more absorbent, which makes cotton sheets ideal. And it's why it's used intertwined into the paper's fibers to give the best painting surface. This is also the reason why watercolor paper made with cotton doesn't warp or buckle underwater as quickly as traditional office type paper. Um, you may have seen some that also say in addition to mating, to being made with 100% cotton that they are mold made like this example right here, um, which refer to the papers made on a cylinder mold machine and have a reputation for having heavier weights, better watermarks and surface stability. Um, other papers are likely to be machine made, made in one continuous sheet on a wire belt and are not as stable as mold made and do not have a deckled edge. Now a deckled edge means the rough, untrimmed or uncut edge of a sheet of paper formed by a deckle. And a deckle is a removable wooden frame or fence used in paper making. Um, okay, now let's talk about the weight, which is given in pounds per square meter. Um, and you'll see here that all of my paper examples have some information on that. So on my mixed media paper, you'll see that it says um, 98 pounds or 160 grams. Uh, the U.S. is the only oddball in the world, you know, that does that is not on the metric system. So my guess is that that's the conversion that's equivalent to the 98 pounds. Anyways, Artist Loft says it's 90 pounds or 185 grams per square meter. And Arteza comes in at 140 grams per 300 grams, yeah, 100, excuse me, 140 pounds or 300 grams per square meter. And finally, Arches comes in um, at a whopping 300 pounds or 640 grams per square meter. Let me tell you guys, this paper is thick. I mean, it's like working on a flat panel canvas. I mean, it's heavy duty. So the higher these numbers go, the more expensive they're going to be. Now, why Arches is even more expensive now than earlier this year is perhaps, I don't know, maybe there's some sort of supply and demand issue on the material, or maybe there's not as many manufacturers for this product anymore, or maybe because since it's an import, shipments aren't as frequent due to COVID. You know, but those as far as my guesses, are, uh, as far as they go, I don't even want to try to guess why um, beyond that at least. So, okay, let me give you the rundown on explaining these numbers. Let's use the Arteza 140 pounds or 300 grams per square meter pad. What this is saying is that during the process of making the paper, a stack of 500 full sheets, not necessarily being um, cut into nine by 12, but whatever um, size they are cut down or originally are before cut down, this product will weigh 140 pounds 140 pounds, again, per 500 full sheets, or converted to the 300 grams per square meter. What I learned is that this particular number of 140 pounds is the lowest number to be categorized as thick. Now, since this is technically, this paper is technically in the thick department, we'll see how it holds up to arches, which is indeed thick. Um, now, the only two reasons I can think of why they put expert label on this is because it's technically in the appropriate thickness categories among the professional papers, even though it's borderline to thinner paper or paper suggested for beginners, like the um, artist lock one here. Um, but anyways, so 
or is he trying to go with this? My, my son's downstairs, I think I'm hearing him. So, okay, the other reason why they would put expert on the paper for me, at least in my thought process, um, is to attract anyone who feels like they're getting the highest quality product on the market. Trusting that not many people will research that there are in fact higher weights um, out there for watercolor paper. Uh, something else I learned is that the lower weighing or thinner papers that are under 200 pounds, which would be, you know, these three here, um, are suggested to stretch before beginning your artwork to prevent warping. This I did not know when I first started and may have helped me quite a bit if I did know. So if you're up to trying yourself, hopefully it'll work for you and keep your paper from collapsing or curling in like, you know, a potato chip, which makes our work look, you know, really cheap. And, you know, we all know our time and effort, no matter our skill level, is not cheap. So stretching means you basically need to put your paper in water. That's right, submerge your paper in water like a paper bath to soak it, which stretches the fibers. When it's thoroughly wet, simply take it out and put it on a flat surface and then put another stiff flat surface on top of it um, while it's drying. And then when you re-wet it with paint, when it's dried and then re-wet it with your paint when you're doing your project or your, your piece, the expansion will be much less and which will reduce the buckling effect. So this stretching method by wetting the paper, um, it creates bumps, kind of like, I'm gonna try to uh, think here, kind of like hills on an uneven terrain. Um, and it helps the pigment seep even deeper into the fibers or uh, of the rough paper, which it has now become, which is ideal for wet on wet application. Glazing also works better because the paper grips the, the first layer nicely. The rougher surface is also conducive to dry brushing, which is great for creating the illusion of foliage, but does not work well for scraping out rocks when painting landscapes. Um, rough paper is also harder to remove unwanted paint with like from a spray bottle, you know? So if you mess up, that's basically a way of saying, too bad, so sad, you're stuck with what you put on the paper. Um, I, honestly, I thought taping the sides would prevent it from buckling and that did not work, at least not for me and for the amount of paint that I was using. Plus, I was using a gouache paint, which is heavier than traditional translucent watercolors. I mean, I covered every square inch of my Arteza watercolor paper here and it still caved on me. Um, although the taping did help, but it did not keep it perfectly flat like I was hoping. Um, maybe again, I was just convinced because it said expert on here that it was, that's all I needed to have was expert paper and, and you know, not worry about anything else from there. Um, but I do like the detailed border the tape gives. So that part was nice. In addition to helping me keep my paper secure to the working surface. Um, so next you'll see, this one's a little bit larger print so you can see, but next you'll see it says cold pressed. Um, I don't have any hot press paper cause that's another option of watercolor papers. I just have cold pressed, but cold press has like a medium textured surface, usually favored by beginners. And with cold pressed paper, some pigment penetrates into the fibers. Uh, a painting on this type of paper is known to give off a velvety appearance, uh, works well for scraping out rocks, like with a credit card when painting landscapes, and is not ideal for um, glazing because the new layer tends to disturb the first layer. Something else that's known for cold press is it's too smooth to apply dry brush tech, a dry brush technique that a lot of artists use to create um, like landscaping features such as trees and bushes. However, this, pa this paper is great if you wanna spray off an area that you mess up on and wanna correct it. So psh, perfect. Um, so it has a really good reputation for um, you know, moving, removing that or removing your mistakes. Um, it also has a reputation for being, you know, an excellent surface for combining pastels, particularly the pan pastels. And some of the notes I've come across say that the diffused wet on wet application is still doable on cold press, but there's a risk of losing the forms from excessive pigment bleeding. Um, the artist the working artist with this paper really needs to be highly skilled at controlling the amounts of paint and water going onto the paper. But with hot pressed paper, 
It's the smoothest watercolor paper and is great for artists who like adding in, you know, like super fine detail in their work that gives, that also gives off a flat finish. Very little pigment penetrates beyond sitting on the surface. Um, it doesn't have a reputation for being sufficient for general watercolor painting. Um, although it is suitable for fine detail work, such as ink and pen, kind of like I already mentioned, and it works well with gouache. I mean, I'm so kind of kicking myself that I did not know that now because I wish I knew because I use gouache on cold pressed paper, which is this one, um, and my paper buckled. And I also didn't stretch it, you know, only being 140 pound paper and unaware of the common practices to do so, especially with the wider laid, the light, Say that backwards, lighter weighted paper is considered lighter weight paper if it's, um, again, under 200 pounds. Okay, I think I covered everything I can think of about the given information on the product. So next, I want to doodle around on each paper to show you the outcome of each type of paper to help you better make a decision when looking to buy based on your budget, current skill level, along with the vision of art that you want to apply or put on your paper. So... Let's get started. Okay guys, so I have my little sample sheets here and I've labeled them according to the brand. And this one is the Mixed Media the Arteza Arches and Artist Loft. As you can see, I have already put some type of medium down, which I, what I use is my uh, Arteza watercolor pencils. And I thought that would just be faster. That way you guys can see how everything, each composition changes. Um, and so you can see the different uh, textures of each paper. So the mixed media here, you might be able to tell it's very, like, it's pretty smooth. It almost looks like a, you know, a light crayon went over it or something. It really doesn't, it just, it doesn't feel like office, like thick, as thin as office paper, but not as quite as heavy as cardstock paper. Um, the Arteza here definitely feels a little thicker than the cardstock type of paper and you can see the texture difference here and um, move along to the arches and you can really see the texture difference and this one I mean I can't even bend it and maybe you can see the thickness I mean that's where the um, where it tore off in the pad but like that's that's how thick it is. That's how heavy duty it is. Um, and then finally I have the Artist Loft and this one feels like, I guess I would say like resume paper, semi texture on it. And you know, really that's about it. So they, again, they all have the same color, same um, composition going. So what I'm gonna do next is just use my little squeeze watercolor pen and just try to you know, see how much water um, the paper can hold before it starts to buckle. That way you can see, um, actually I should tape them down first. Let me do that. And I have my little um, painter's tape here. Oh, already ready for that. Also, um, none of these have been stretched. So I guess this is another good way for you to see that if you don't stretch your paper, you know, how bad it can go or not bad. Um, I definitely don't think this um, arches is going to need any kind of stretchings as well above the 200 pound limit, but it'll be interesting to see how everything else turns out. Needless to say, this is just fun. I like to experiment. So anyways, if you're interested in the colors that I use, they will be listed in the description, but again, they're just the um, Watercolor pencils by Arteza, Arteza, whatever. Um, and they are the expert. Notice I've been fishing out the expert products. <laughs> so anyways, maybe it's just that warm and fuzzy feeling that I want in order to make myself feel good that I bought the best on the market. So, all right, I'm just going to, and I'm not very experienced with these pens. I usually just like to, you know, use half pans and just kind of do my own thing with a regular paintbrush. But these are actually kind of neat. They're super convenient. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and here and start off with squeezing off some water. See if I can get some to come out. Oh, here it comes, okay. And you can also see how these um, watercolor pencils work too, and just how much, uh, or how nicely they blend rather, so. And quite simple, I like simple. 
Okay, so you can see. And at this point, I am not squeezing anymore. I just kind of squeezed out a little bit. And I'm gonna see how far I can extend this over here. Um, I love these colors. They remind me of the beach. If you don't know anything about me or not, I am um, born and raised Los Angeles up until I was about, oh, 31. Yeah, almost 31 and then I joined the military. Yes, that late. <laughs> Anyways, but then funny thing is, I, my first duty station was on the Florida Gulf Coast. So I love the beach. I, the colors of the water and the sand. Oh my goodness gracious. So I'm kind of reminiscing here. Again, I'm not really squeezing out a whole lot more water, but you can definitely see just by going back and forth, you know, the, the, how the pencils are working and it just kind of makes everything really pretty. Okay. I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible too by giving everything a good coverage. Yeah, that definitely looks beachy. I don't think I'll be living at a, at a beach anytime soon or even more when we retire. <laughs> That's okay. At least I've been there and got to live there. Okay, so you might already tell here that the edges are kind of lifting already and just really not looking like it's a very uh, high quality. So again, for me, you probably have noticed, like I said, the pencil that looked like a crayon being the, the um, paper texture being really smooth or surface being really smooth. Hence the, um, I guess, the reason it is more ideal for pencil work. Um, you know, hey, if you can market other things for it to be used for, that's good too. So I guess that's really more of a marketing purposes to say that it's also good for watercolor and acrylics. Again, how much you would use on the paper is really, oop, almost spilled. How much you would, how much you use on paper would determine how the paper is going to hold up. All right, so now we're moving on to the Arteza here. Ooh. Oh, good. I thought, shoot, for a second, I thought I had a refill already. Okay. Paint extends pretty well. I'm not really squeezing anything out. I mean, I'm not really continuously squeezing. I'm trying to just let all the water on my brush do its job before I need to squeeze out any more. Notice these colors look a little bit different too. All right, yeah. Super easy to do. I'm loving these pencils. Really loving these pencils. Great for beginners. Okay. I'm kind of running dry now, so I'm going to squeeze a little bit more water out. Clearly you can see the um, residual paint bleeding into this brown here, but that's okay. Normally I would just squeeze out, just keep squeezing the water until the it would just kind of self clean itself on the, self clean itself, until it would self clean the bristles um, and just wipe it off. But I'm really just trying to get through the motion here so you can see what I'm trying to um, show you. So, okay. I think that's good. All right, next we are on the arches in this one. And so you can see here too, this is already kind of to, starting to curl a little bit. All right, and ooh, now it's ugly. <laughs> now it just kind of looks like, oh, okay. This one for sure. I mean, I don't know as far as these two go, I wouldn't know how much difference using tape would be or even if you stretched it. Again, that's something for you to consider. Um, it is the soaking at least or the stretching process sounds like it's pretty timely. And you're gonna sit around and wait for your paper to thoroughly dry. I mean, that's something like you, it sounds like for me, you'd have to plan out your 
um, project in advance versus just, you know, going, you know what, I think I want to sit down and paint something and just have it readily, you know, there for you to start doodling on. So, all right. So, yes, technically here I am going to town on these. I mean, I'm covering every square inch. And this is like starting to hurt <laughs> in here with the constant squeezing or at least continuous when needed. I guess that would be the only kind of thing that's not cool about these brushes. If you're continuously squeezing, you really have to have some um, good strength built up in your wrist and your forearm. That I used to have. Another fun fact about me, I used to be a bodybuilder. Yep. My little old 100 pound self used to bench press 50 pound dumbbells. If you guys want to see for yourself, feel free to look on my, um, I have another Facebook page, Heather Darnall. You'll see my profile picture. I am doing some, um, I think tricep pull downs on the cable machine. Anyway, so one of my videos, you'll see me lift, lifting a little bit and see, you see my journey. All right, anyways, so here you can tell that the paper has definitely retained its shape. It's not warping, it's not curling. So already for me, I can tell not only do the colors, now they're all really vibrant. Actually, I think this one is the most vibrant, um, probably because it has more to absorb being thicker. Um, but again, I'm really glad that you guys are able to see each um, composition, you know, come out that way you can um, just see how everything is coming together and how all of these papers react with, you know, just all this water coming all over it. And again, I'm, I mean, I'm obviously not being careful, you know, I'm just putting some paint over it, trying to show you guys something. And I'm not even done. And you can already see that just starting to curl. Goodness gracious. Okay, we are almost done. Okay. And you guys are sticking this out. Thank you so much. <laughs> So, let me go ahead and show you this paper. Well, I guess hopefully, well, maybe you can't see. Well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably take this down for a close-up. But as for now, as an overview, at least you can see um, the different papers and how they show the colors um, as far as being more vibrant than a different type of paper. But, and also if you can maybe see the texture still or not. So yeah, let me go ahead and um, bring it in for a close up and at least kind of let you guys see the edges here. So hang on for that. All right guys, so look at here. Here's the mixed media. Clearly it is not even near sitting, you know, flush to the surface. It is just like, you know, not looking good. Here's the texture or at least what it looks like. I would say it probably looks the smoothest again, because there's really no texture to it. But again, as far as the thinness or the thickness or lack of thickness, you can clearly see here. It's, it's just, I would say it's just one step up above typical or traditional, um, office paper. So here's the Arteza. And before you get your hopes up, let me just <laughs> go up this way here. And you can see that it's lifted there. Now, it hasn't lifted a lot. It really just is kind of like on the one portion, really one corner more than the other. And you can still see the texture of the watercolor paper. Um, so I guess 
if I went to town more on it. I don't know how much more that would change, but at least, you know, hey, just trying to show you something. And then here is the um, arches. Barely, barely lifting like a millimeter or two. And you gotta consider that a lot of that shadow you're seeing is the actual thickness. Like see, it's a lot of the thickness in there. And it is flush. So pretty darn sturdy and heavy duty. Again, you can see a lot of the texture still. You can feel it too. And then here is the artist loft from this end. It looks like it's holding up, but then you can already see that it's lifting there. So um, you can see just a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna give you an overview again and you guys can just take one last final look, kind of get your, uh, collect your thoughts there about the paper. And while you're doing that, don't forget to uh, share this video if you liked it, that way everyone else can see um, what I was able to share with you. Hopefully be it'll be helpful for them as well. And to also hit like and to subscribe for me, you guys, I love making these videos and just being as helpful as I can. Um, it really is just a, it really is my stress relief reliever. I think a lot of us need some of that, you know, with all this just craziness going on. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and just for your patience and willing to hear me out. And if you guys have any questions pointers, anything like that, um, suggestions, please feel free to put them in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. But that concludes this video. So more simple, most importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity and always paint from the soul. Until next time.